I started to get into horror games back in 2020 during the time of the pandemic. Doing so has led me to discover some really fun horror games. I'm more into the survival horror action types, but I enjoy the hide and seek kind too, mainly for the story than the gameplay. While there are some, some which I don't particularly like, I still try to find some way to enjoy the positive aspects. Over the, over the time, I found three games which stand out to me, and I would like to compare them to which one is better at which. Also, just to do something different for the channel. Please note that these are my opinions and are not to put the other games to shame. This is just an experimental video I'm doing. If you don't agree with me, that's fine. Nightmare of Decay is a retro survival horror first person shooter created by Czech Media Games where the protagonist is trapped in the nightmare world in the form of a mansion. From there you explore the building, learning about it and fighting undead horrors while trying to escape. Night at the Gates of Hell is made by Torture Star Video and published by Puppet Combo, about a guy called David stuck in a zombie apocalypse, trying to find a way to stop it and survive delving into the supernatural and paranormal, fighting a cult along the way. Amnesia the Bunker, a game by Frictional Games, in the fourth installment of the Amnesia series, playing as a World War I French soldier trapped in the bunker, regaining consciousness after being injured, trying to save his friend. From there, you try to find a way out of the bunker, using whatever you can to fight a beast that killed all your fellow soldiers, and roams the bunker, hunting you down. Nightmare of Decay has a good chunk of enemies, aside from the typical Resident Evil zombies and dogs. There are ghouls, giant spiders, haunted suits of armor, skeletons and such which are introduced in ways to catch the player off guard. Even the bosses are done well, feeling intimidating and unique. The cultists can be somewhat annoying considering they're the only enemies which use guns. The monsters in the gates of hell mostly consist of zombies, though there are a lot of unique zombie skins. Some stand out, some are just one color or texture, some look goofy and don't make sense on how, on how they can kill you, there are kid zombies and some that, that are just torsos. There are some unique enemies like the dog ones, these heads which crawl around and can, only, and can only be killed with a blow to the back of their head, and of course the cultists that wield weapons. There are only two bosses, and while they mostly consist of shoot till dead, their designs and the way they behave is different enough. For the Munker, there's one or two kinds of enemies in one boss. The Stalker doesn't come after you in the light, but it stays in the darkness and peeks out of the holes used to travel between areas. There's also a rat infestation where they feast on dead bodies, and the only way to get rid of them is to burn the bodies so they don't come back. There's also an insane soldier who wanders some ruins. It's tense fighting him because he has a shotgun that deals a lot of damage and the halls are foggy and it's hard to see through. His singing echoes through the halls and it's definitely haunting to listen to. Nightmare of Decay has the weakest of the three. It doesn't have much music. While the sound design is good, the areas are too brightly lit up. 
there are some good uses of environment like the water hiding enemies beneath, and then you get caught off guard by surprise. But other than some, some of the sound design, there isn't much to keep you on your toes. Night at the Gates of Hell has some good sound design, like during the town area, you search for supplies and parts for a boat. The town is drenched in darkness with some lights. And there are some jump scares which catch you off guard. There is also a decent use of fog in some areas, like the graveyards and the opening in the on the island. The zombie sounds are also pretty good, making you paranoid when they're around. However, there are also some overly lit areas, and the final battle battle at the end pretty is pretty climactic, but the music is sort of goofy and makes some parts silly. Amnesia the Bunker nails its atmosphere so well. Light and darkness play a huge part in the setting of the bunker. Light is the only thing keeping the monster away, but when it gets dark, it gets dark dark, and you have a small amount of vision around you, and there are some glowing red lights. Aside from that, the sounds of the explosions coming from the active war above really highlight the situation you're in. Not only that, every sound you make adds depth. The sounds of the rat hissing, the stalkers crawling and arrival add so much fear to it. The, mu the music when the stalker chases you is tense too. Nightmare of Decay, like any other zombie game, prioritizes headshots for a good chunk of the enemies. The aiming is good, all things considered. The zombies are slow and somewhat spongy, but they can be stunned after a few hits. If they get too close, they grab you and chew you until you die. You can still aim and shoot them while you're grabbed and can kill them before they can chew you. Guns in the games are good to use and have, and have slightly different tweaks for them, like the Magnum needing the button to be held to shoot. The puzzles are simple and don't require much skill, but they're fine. Backtracking isn't that bad since the manor isn't too big. During combat encounters and bosses, you have stamina it and it's not too good. I'm just gonna say it now, stamina meters are just boring these days. They aren't fun and are just a hindrance. I've already said this in my security breach, but they're both playing it safe and a risk at the same time. They either don't add anything to the game or are done or flat out done badly. Nightmare of Decay is sadly more of the done badly part, but it makes sense considering the character you play isn't a very fit person, judging from the intro. No offense to anyone like that in real life, I enjoy having a lot of pizza. There are some side quests like the shooting gallery, or the one where you have to give a demon three female heads to get some supplies. They're all fine things considered. Night at the Gates of Hell is less gameplay than the others. There's only two guns, a revolver and a shotgun. The game prioritizes headshots to the max, and I mean the max. Every zombie is functionally the same. Shooting anywhere else doesn't do anything. Even the cultists are seemingly only killed with headshots. The head enemies can only be killed by attacking the back of their head, but I was never able to kill them, because they're pretty fast and I only use knives to get them. Knives can be used as an instant kill for zombies, but can only be used when you're being grabbed by, by a zombie. They can't be used for melee. Like I said, there are dog enemies, but, but they're like the normal zombies, but they're faster and harder to shoot. When they die, they catch fire. There's no need to worry about saving ammo, because the game gives, gives a lot of ammo around the map for you to collect. There are traps, but it's only used for one level, and they just spawn enemies. And you can't disarm them, but they're only triggered once. The shooting from the guns can be a bit off, like when you think you're aiming at the head and the bullets don't hit. 
There are times where you fight a group of zombies, you might need, you might get stun locked in an animation, and depending if you have knives, this can be somewhat annoying as some can be faster than you, and you can't move around when aiming with iron sight. Amnesia the Bunker's gameplay is the deepest of the three. Like Night of the Gates of Hell, you only have two guns, but ammo is much more scarce. But you won't be using the, the guns to attack. In the Bunker, they're more like tools for progression. You can shoot locks on doors, shoot barrels or canisters near the monster, or to blow stuff up. You can use grenades to attack and blow up the doorways. The shotgun can be used to destroy wooden doors. There are a lot of traps that are placed in the bunker, and can be used against a monster. They can be disarmed, but only with a specific tool. I'll let you figure that out on your own if you haven't played the game. The monster is attracted to noise, and every gunshot, explosion, your footsteps, or any noise made by you, the stalker will pursue you. On medium and above, the monster will adapt to damage and will take more gunshots to shoo away unless on easy difficulty. The rats, as mentioned before, are attracted to dead bodies. You can burn them so they don't come back. If you get too close, they'll attack you. When you take damage, you start bleeding, and that makes more rats appear. And on shell-shocked, it causes you to lose health unless you use a bandage to stop the bleeding. The rats will also leave when the beast is around. You can also use gas grenades, meat to distract them, create torches to scare them away or blow them up, but they'll always come back. The exploration in the bunker is stronger than the other two. You constantly have to look for supplies, like looking for fuel to keep a generator on, looking for dog tags to unlock lockers, looking for items to ward off the beast, even tools to unlock areas like vents or chains. Unlike the other two on this list, the playthroughs will not be the same. Traps, codes, items, and weapons will be randomized, with shell-shocked mode randomizing everything from bodies to lockers, etc. Even the custom difficulty lets you choose which you want to use and such. It seemed to have happened almost overnight. We couldn't believe what we were seeing. Everyone thought it was some elaborate hoax, but we were wrong. my body, captures my mind, bleeds my soul. This thing I have done, this thing, this thing. It is lunch in the mess hall currently. Oh, the thought of eating repulses me. In Nightmare of Decay, after watching the news of random disappearances, you get a snack and, and shower before bed. When your TV turns on and you hallucinate a guy with a woman's head, as they vanish. You go back to bed and then you wake up in a coffin and find yourself outside a mansion where a cat tells you that you've been claimed by the nightmare. Nightmare of Decay has a, has a decent plot. The survivors are there as fodder which I don't mind. They serve their part pretty well. The best character is the black cat, who you find occasionally. The characters are just there I guess. Some have significance. The story, while well told from notes, does a decent job. The art style for the game looks really good as well. It's not just the typical PS1 retro graphics, there's also a weird mix of the PS2 era. The faces are animated really naturally, the textures are more detailed than the average amount of pixels, and the gore actually looks really good. And the main zombie enemies are somewhat intimidating in groups, and they're decently dangerous even when they're facing one. Which is pretty impressive considering zombies to me these days aren't scary and are just overused. For the plot of the Gates of Hell, you start the game in a forest where you play as a guy called Liam and he's about to make love with a woman, but you have to go back to the car to get something which I won't reveal because you two might demonetize me regardless of context. You return to the spot where you see her being killed by zombies, which I can't show because again I might be demonetized. 
you run away to the church and get killed. You then start as David in his apartment and play as him for the rest of the game. The characters for the most part are fine. Charles when you meet him is obnoxious at first but soon stops when his mom dies. Belinda, the mother being well, the mother I guess, acting mad when things go wrong but for good reasons. Stan, the guy with glasses, being the calm, cool, and collected of the group, also being a badass too, which makes him the best character so far. Skeeter, a war veteran with a dead wife who swore he wouldn't touch a gun again until the end where he has to. He's fine. Then there's the captain who's an idiot and who lies about knowing a safe place, endangering everyone in the process. The plot is reminiscent of the classic 1900 zombie movies like Night of the Living Dead. Some people will find enjoyment in it. I found some good moments in there, though the humor for me just really falls flat. There are notes to find, but they aren't that interesting, at least for me. The art style is the usual puppet combo style of PS1. Warping textures, humans with not many animated features, though the environments are pretty good. Torture Star Video really did a good job with the aesthetic. Amnesia the Bunker's plot and characters are the best in my opinion. The Bunker's intro is the strongest in any game, playing as Henry as he dives into trenches of the battlefield, and you make your way through, learning the mechanics, fighting the Germans, and being aided by your friend Lambert. After a flashback, you're in a field looking for Lambert, and you stumble across him in a large pit. You then carry him back to the Bunker, but on the way a mortar shell strikes Henry and he falls unconscious. He then wakes up with Amnesia in the Bunker. And from there, the game truly begins. The characters here are fantastic, even the ones that get killed off quickly leave an impact. The soldier you meet at the start, the German prisoner, Henry and Lambert, even the cultists. The way you learn about the monster is really good too. The issue, however, is the world building is told again through pages with a lot of reading to do. Some of it is useful, but most of it is just really too long, with some interesting stuff. The graphics look phenomenal. Frictional really nailed the look of the bunker. The gore is great, the rats are creepy, the ruins are beautiful, the lighting is amazing. The design of the stalker is honestly genius, and the way it's hidden is really clever. I think you need to read that book and see if there's anything about getting back home. Home? Cause we sure as hell ain't in Kansas anymore. Overall, the bunker takes the first place, as the scariest of the three. The game plays deep, with you experimenting with everything and finding ways to progress through the bunker. The story, while really being somewhat minimal, was fun, figuring out despite the vast amount of reading required. The randomness of the monster and the traps are what kept the game feeling tense and scary, and the dirty, decaying look of the bunker was top-notch. Nightmare of Decay comes in second place. The guns were good to use, the enemy variety was good, the combat, exploration, and puzzles were really good. The stamina could have been better, and the environment, while it more good-looking, should have been scarier. It's still a fun game. Night at the Gates of Hell comes in third place. The gameplay was alright, albeit sort of clunky in a few areas. The loud noises could have been toned down, and the graphics, all charming, were just not that appealing to me, but the models looked scary, and the story was fine. It's worth giving a shot. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please remember that these are just my opinions, and you can disagree if you'd like. Be sure to subscribe for more content.